Good afternoon, everyone. Eric Morrow here to report the area news for WJSQ WLAR. Brought to you by Farmers Insurance, a Donny Gaddis agency. Making the news today, Capstar Financial Holdings Inc., known as Capstar, a bank holding company that operates primarily through its wholly owned subsidiary, Capstar Bank, and Athens Bank Shares Corporation of Athens, the bank holding company for Athens Federal Community Bank National Association, otherwise known as Athens Federal, announced Monday evening that they have entered into a definitive agreement for Athens to merge with and into Capstar and for Athens Federal to merge with and into Capstar Bank. The transaction has been unanimously approved by the Board of Directors of Capstar and Athens Federal. In the merger, Athens shareholders will receive 2.864 shares of Capstar Common Stock for each share of Athens Common Stock. The all-stock transaction is valued approximately at $113.5 million, or $57.54 per share of Athens Common Stock, based on the closing price of Capstar Common Stock on June 11, 2018. Headquartered in downtown Athens, Athens Federal has more than 80 years of history serving individuals, families, and businesses through its 10 banking offices located in southeast Tennessee. As of March 31, 2018, the company had approximately $482.3 million in total assets and $422.2 million in deposits, along with $334.5 million in gross loans. This partnership will greatly benefit our customers and our community. We expect the shareholders of Athens will benefit from the combined company's strong financial performance and growth opportunities going forward said Athens President Chief Executive Officer Jeffrey Cunningham. This is a great partnership. Two companies with the same shared values and goals. We are excited. Cunningham will continue with the combined company as a senior executive role as Executive Vice President of Community Bank Strategy. Michael Hutzel, Athens Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer and Jay Laggard, Athens Cleveland City President, will also continue with Capstar in senior roles. Upon completion of the merger, two members of the Athens Board will join the Board of Directors of Capstar and Capstar Bank. Capstar and Athens play an active role in supporting their communities and will continue this commitment in the markets that combined companies will serve. As a sign of this commitment, Capstar has agreed to contribute $1.5 million to Athens Federal Foundation over the next four years. Completion of the transaction is subject to customary closing conditions, including the recipient of required shareholders and regulatory approvals. The transaction is expected to close during the fourth quarter of 2018. Well, a nursing home has signed a $30 million settlement to resolve a Medicare fraud lawsuit filed by two whistleblowers. One whistleblower, Christy Emerson, tells the Tennessean she worked at Signature Healthcare of Columbia for more than a decade. She says by 2015, pressure from the corporate managers was intolerable and included demands that hours of therapy be performed daily even though necessary it was not necessary for a patient. The lawsuit was unsealed Monday by, by a federal judge in Nashville. It accused the nursing home of artificially inflating therapy time to maximize profits. Prosecutors say the $30 million settlement that the total fraud was roughly around $244 million. Signature did not admit any wrongdoing in the settlement agreement. Well, released today, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation released a study detailing the volume and nature of crime identified as being domestic violence in nature. The annual report compiles crime data submitted to the TBI by the state's law enforcement agencies through the Tennessee Incident-Based Reporting System, which is also known as TIBRS. Among the findings of domestic violence in 2017, a total of 77,846 domestic violence offenses were, report, were reported in 2017, representing a decrease of 1.8 percent since 2016. Simple assault accounted for the largest number of domestic violence offenses. Females were three times as more likely to be victimized as males and accounted for 71.5 percent of reported victims. Juveniles accounted for approximately not for 9.8 percent of the reported domestic violence victims, with founding being most reported offenses against the juveniles. In a statement, we have, I would like to thank all participating law agencies for their hard work and contributions to making this report thorough and accurate 
picture of crime in Tennessee, said the acting TBI director, Jason Locke. It is only with their support that the state continues to maintain such a successful program. Well, here are a couple community announcements that are taking place. The City of Athens Public Works Department announces the following street closure. The area to be affected is Maple Street from Old Riceville Road to Fry Street. This portion of Maple Street will be closed Thursday, June 14th from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Flagging crews will be in place, however motorists are uh, advised to use caution when the in the area. The purpose of the street closure is for street repairs. The American Job Center Career Coach Bus will be in Etowah at the library this Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. assisting for job searching, interviews, and referral letters that will be offered. You can hear the local, state, and regional news on WJSQ 101.7 FM Monday through Saturday at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m. WJSQ News can be also be found here on the WJSQ WLAR YouTube channel Monday through Friday every evening with a wrap-up of today's headlines. If you see news happening or you just want to let us simply know about a community event that's taking place, you can reach us at the following email address. That's news, N-E-W-S, at W-J-S-Q, W-L-A-R, dot com. This is Eric Morrow reporting for W-J-S-Q, W-L-A-R. You all had a great afternoon.